Hey everyone, Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and it's time for our monthly series of what it would cost to build a mining rig right now in current market conditions. And actually, the GPU that I chose this month is the 3060 Ti LHR. Now, the 3060 Ti non LHR is selling upwards of $1,400, maybe $1,200 plus. Uh, so I didn't want to pick out that card, uh, but if you can get your hands on those GPUs, I would recommend doing so. They're just really hard to do. LHR. 3060 Ti's are more available and they're much cheaper. So we're just gonna go ahead and build out with this rig. I'm gonna give you the pricing, the cost, and links to all the parts used is gonna be down in the description. So please feel free to click the links because it does help support the channel. The builds list that I have here right in front of you is starting off with the Intel Celeron G5920 CPU. It's a dual core processor. And I found it a little bit cheaper at $66.45. However, this might sell out pretty quick. So your next best thing is going to be the Intel Pentium Gold G6400. Well, both of these G, uh, CPUs are LGA1200. Uh, so they both will fit the motherboard I selected here, which is the MSI B560M-A Pro. Uh, it's a micro ATX board, but it has all the connections that we need. It's around 100 bucks. Uh, and remember that the motherboard or the number of lanes you have available depends on the CPU and motherboard uh, because some motherboards do offer lanes through the chipset and stuff like that. So you all want to take that into account. But mining at uh, you know each GPU taking a buy one lane or uh, one X lane, uh, you should be good to go if you split out the connection. It also has an M.2 slot in which you can get the adapter I featured in my last video. Uh, to help open additional lanes. In this case, we're just going to use two of the U-bit or buy one to four USB uh, splitters to go ahead and, and get the extra oomph or lanes or connections that we need for our GPU since we don't have buy 16 for everything. Uh, CPU or excuse me, the memory of choice is the G-Skill Aegis 4 gigabyte. So that's going to be eight total. Uh, you don't need to go this ham. I mean, this is DDR4 2400. Uh, that's not really a fast uh, megahertz, but you could go uh, 2133. You could even get uh, two two gig sticks. But in today's technology, in today's world, you might as well get it. If you can find something a little bit cheaper, but 20 bucks isn't too crazy for memory these days. Uh, you're not getting anywhere near what you would spend for, you know, 3600, 4000 megahertz memory. So that's actually a pretty decent deal. And again, for storage, the ADATA SU 6350 or 635 is my choice because i mean it's still a dang good deal at around 26 25 bucks is, is what i've been seeing for the past couple of months it's a 240 gigabyte so plenty of storage for your os or any other things if you're using hive operating systems you don't even need something this big so you could go a little bit smaller this is primarily for people utilizing windows to mine on now as for the pricing of the 3060 ti uh, again lhr not the non-lhr Total with six GPUs would be $49.20. That's putting the GPU price, each individual GPU, at $820. So that's what I factored into my mass. Now, for the power supply, yes, we can go with a non gigabyte power supply like the EVGA BQ850 watt, 80 plus bronze certified semi modular power supply. Uh, it's around $93. You get two of those and have enough or should have enough to power your system just remember if you don't have enough uh strands right so each gpu strand or power strand is uh can only run so many watts through that one strand even though you may have two you know six plus two pin connectors which would be a total of eight you may have two of those on one strand um if you're trying to power two gpus and you're pulling 200 watts each that's no bueno okay uh check out my video guide on powering your mining rig uh, but these GPUs, stock TDP is 200 watts. Now, yes, we're not running these GPUs at our stock TDP. We're going to be tuning and making it more efficient. However, you need to prepare just in case drivers crash, issues happen, power reset, whatever it may be. Your overclocks or underclocks are reset to default values. And next thing you know, you're pulling 175, 180 watts. Um, you want to take that into account. So you want to have enough power for everything. So with that being said, that's why I mentioned getting two 850 BQ uh, from EVJ or any 850 power supply that's good and non gigabyte. Um, otherwise, what I would recommend instead is a good power supply uh, from Parallel Miner. You must take into account though, if you're using a 1200 watt power supply, 
that if you're on 110, you're gonna be around 750 watts. If you're on uh, 110 or 120, 750 watts. But if you're running on a 240 volt system, then you could use a 1200 watt PSU. And you could combine this one server PSU and breakout board like the ZZX, uh, ZSX, excuse me, breakout board from Parallel Miner with an ATX power supply and you could get definitely have more juice to cover everything. That's normally what most miners run is a HP service power supply uh, with a breakout board and an ATX power supply. Uh, but with the ZSX breakout board, you can technically take care of everything. But 1200 watts is not gonna be enough to cover your peripherals, your connections, your motherboard, and your GPUs, at least with this particular build. So you're gonna need two of these or an ATX and one of these. Um, there's some more connections and everything here. Uh, this is just a server power supply and, and basic breakout board, but this is, this is the one that supports 24 pin and much more fans, all that good stuff. So um, first off, let me see here, what do we wanna do? All right, let's talk about the connection. All right, so looking at this motherboard, again, we have one by 16 and then we have two by ones and then an M.2. We're gonna take those two by ones and split those out. And to do that, you don't wanna use something like this. Uh, Tech Shinji and I have a conversation about this and, and I think he misunderstood me uh, because it was clear that he thought I was gonna use this type of connector right here, which takes a buy one and adds additional USB. That's not gonna work for mining. Instead, what you need is something like this, okay? Um, what I was talking about was adding additional storage to my Chia farm uh, which I can use something like this if I had USB storage or whatever that I wanted to provide uh, to, or expand upon my Chia farm. That You don't want to use something like this. It's a long story short. You need something like this guy right here. Now, I've been using my U-Bit one for the longest time. Uh, this one will work as well, but the bad thing is, is that some of these are from unnamed brands or brands I never heard of, so you want to be very careful. Here's one that I, that I actually have used, and this one works pretty good. So around 33 bucks, get two of those, six to six, uh, you know, 70 bucks, call it even, and you will be able to connect up to eight GPUs, but we're only building out the system for six GPUs, which is why I chose this frame. Uh, and this frame's around 54 bucks, but I always encourage people to build your own frames, go to Home Depot, get some angle iron, make your own cuts, uh, you know, put it all together yourself and save some money. You could probably get all the materials that you need for around 20 bucks and then just a little bit of labor and you're good to go. Otherwise, Here's a, a frame all set together because Vada frames are super expensive. If you want to get some risers, risers are available. They actually went up in price since my last video uh, from around the, the mid 30s to the mid 40s, so around 10 bucks more. But you're gonna get six risers. I always recommend having more than what you ha what you need. Like So we have six GPUs, we only get six risers. In case one of these risers are bad, DOA, whatever it may be, uh, grab an extra one. If not, just start off with one, see how it goes and go from there. Now, I do encourage people to support uh, my boys over at gprisers.com, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, it's just do what's best for you and your system. Here's some uh, power supply extensions or six pin to dual eight pin extensions. Uh, you may need a couple of these, but just again, please take into account the amount of juice you're pulling through an individual strand uh, because you can overload the power supply or if that power supply is crap like gigabyte you could wind up burning it up or frying it now let's look at current profitability again all the parts are in the description now what's really neat is what to mine actually added the lhr cards in here and they don't always show all at once i i set it to do that but you can actually hit show more and it will show all the various gpus even some of the older generations that maybe not a lot of people are utilizing so now we have the 3060 Ti's L, which stands for LHR. Um, now it does have unverified use of TDP and stuff like that, but I'm gonna put in the six GPUs here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit calculate. Now it's, it, look at the estimation. Let's look at one GPU real quick. Look at the estimation and power, 130 watts. I'm pretty confident that we can get that down to a 120 or lower, um, but you can see that the mega hash is a lot lower compared to the 6060 Ti non-LHR. It's almost half when mining Ethereum. But again, Ethereum is not the only cryptocurrency that miners can mine. Yeah, it's the most profitable, but it's not the only one. So if we go ahead and hit calculate. By the way, here's what it looks like. You just hit show more and it shows a lot of the older GPUs. Uh, but if we scroll down, 
we're gonna be averaging around uh, 20 bucks a day, maybe let's just say 15 to 20 bucks a day, depending on the cryptocurrency and market conditions. Cause obviously market conditions can fluctuate, volatility is real and your profitability may drop days, weeks, months, but then pick back up eventually. But Flux is at the top. Congratulations Flux, I'm, good to, I'm happy to see that community doing well. Conceal. Xano, Equilibra, Ryo, so on and so forth. So let's uh, let's choose one that I've seen at the top more often than not. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with uh, Ravencoin. I know a lot of people may not like that, but we're going to go ahead and go with Ravencoin. Let me see something here. What was the power draw for Ravencoin? Uh, estimation, not actual. You can always tune to get it a little bit better. So yeah, 1140 so about 1200 watts this is why you want to make sure you have more than enough juice because ravencoin is a little bit more power intensive than the ethereum algorithm uh, so let's go ahead and plug in the hardware cost i'm going to estimate with everything the price will be around 5529 um, i'm just going to say uh, let's just give it an even 5600 for hardware costs uh, fees one percent and then we're going to go ahead and hit calculate and our break even with the 3060 Ti LHR on a project, a coin that's not going anywhere because Eve 2.0 happens to come upon us, it's still going to be here and might actually get better once Eve 2.0 and Ethereum is no longer mineable. It's going to be 382 days to break even, an average uh, daily uh, profit of around 15 bucks. Now, again, that could go down to so could only be 10 bucks, and then your break even point gets even further away, but market conditions fluctuate and what who's to say that you don't mind a bunch of raven coin and have thousands of it by the time uh your past your break even point and raven coin jumps up you know to 30 cents per coin then you can be definitely looking at uh paying off your rig plus additional income for various other means maybe expanding your hardware whatever it may be so with raven coin we're looking at 382 days to break even with an average daily uh, profit of $15. And if we go, let's choose another coin here. Um, let's go ahead and choose conceal. And we got everything here. So again, 5,600 on the hardware cost, 1% uh, fee, calculate. We're looking at 357 days to break even with an average uh, profit of $15. So that that's a pretty good number. I would say if you built this rig again, Things are going to happen. It may be only $10 a day with six GPUs, but it is still profitable to mine with these LHR cards. Uh, the biggest thing is how do you identify what's LHR and what's not? And a number of my community members have done videos on that. Um, I may do one as well. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. But check out my boy, The Hobbyist Miner, who actually provides us the 3060Ti LHR mining hash rate, profitability, overclocking, all that good stuff. Really good peoples and uh, make sure you check them out. I have them linked down in the description as well. But that's that, that's the build for this month. The build for September is what you see in front of you. It's gonna cost us around $5,600 to build a mining rig out of 3060 LHR cards. It is profitable to do so. Not as profitable as the non-LHR, but it is profitable to do so, and you could be making anywhere from 10 to $15 a day, and break even is under a year or close to a year if you did build it right now. But I hope this uh, data helps you out in some form or fashion. There's always ways to save money, to pinch pennies and, and cut costs wherever you can. If you can't get these GPUs a lot cheaper, maybe locally, because somebody isn't paying attention to the market, go ahead and do so. I often take advantage of, of, of people that don't pay attention to market conditions and buy GPUs local and wind up winning out. So uh, it's not a bad thing. We're just in a capitalist market. So deal with it. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. Do me a favor on the way out, guys. Please do me a favor. Hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel as well as check out some of the links down below that, again, are affiliate links and help support us. And you all have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.